Some things have happened. Uh, about two days have passed since I last recorded, and I've built quite a few more houses here, as well as a tavern, which is supplying a resource that is creatively titled Tavern, uh, which is here, and it accompanies community in filling uh, this. No, clothing, furnishing, there it is, social access. These guys have two social access, uh, so they have access to both the um, community center, the circular thing, whatever it is, this thing, forum, yeah, as well as the tavern. I built some more doctors, and I also am staffing the elders' councils slowly. Uh, my income is quite low, though. It used to be over 200, but my trade balance is extremely low because I am buying shovels, and shovels are extremely expensive. But I need them for lots of things. However, I... Oh yes, also my population is increasing quite a lot uh, because I'm building houses. These That was, I think, part of the problem. Food supply was certainly an issue, but the primary issue was that most of my people were living in slums. And they have minus 5 health, plus 2 health quality, but then if I build these houses, plus 17 life quality, plus 12 health, they're much better. Um, but the people also don't just move in immediately, they, they need a while. One guy moved into this house and now he needs to uh, live there for a while in order to attract other people, but it takes a while. Anyway, that's not my main problem though. My main problem is that I am running out of wood. I have 66 wood and I'm using 6 per cycle and after 10 cycles then that's it, basically. I am importing more or less all the wood I can from my other settlements. I could increase wood production by maybe two more-ish, but my other settlements just don't have much wood. I thought wood would not be a problem because I would switch to coke, which is made from coal. Unfortunately, I can't make coke yet, I can only make charcoal. Which means my wood production, my wood consumption actually has increased instead of decreased, which is the opposite of what I wanted. I've also tr I turned off some of my smelteries, foundries then, in order to conserve my charcoal and thus wood. And also I just have too much tin anyway, so I, I don't need the foundries at the moment. But uh, I don't really know what to do. I don't have a woodcutting colony, and my vassal who inherited Woodcut, does have a lot of wood, but he is um, not very knowledgeable about the game, so he doesn't understand how he can make trade routes by clicking on this button, and clicking export, then typing wood, and clicking on wood, and then filling in this stuff, and he, he doesn't know how to do that. So I can't make a trade route with him. I really wish I could do that. If I could just somehow teach him, then wood problems would be solved. Also, the game's a bit laggy. Uh, this is because of my recording software. I don't quite understand exactly what the problem is, but somehow the fact that I'm recording makes the game quite uh, laggy. And I'm not certain what to do about it because it's very inconsistent. Sometimes it's fine, other times it's not fine. Also, I can only see how bad it is after the recording is done. Because to me, right now, the game looks fine, but after the recording I'll find that it's paused Anyway, I also expanded my farms a bit around the edges here. I also moved my stone cutting production to another settlement, uh, to Kupferhuber, because I, oh yes, I unlocked many things. I'll show that to you in a moment. I unlocked the stone cutter camps too, which uh, just need a lot more space to work. And there's not enough stone here to merit that. Also, the stone cutter camps allow the construction of stone blocks, which I need. However, the stone blocks require a lot more stone than is available on this map, so I've just moved stone production to another settlement. Um, let's see, I expanded more farms. Yeah, this is pretty laggy. Anyway, what I've unlocked now is uh, stone cutting, as I, as I showed you. Stone cutters, I got, oh yes, I got the next level of builders as well. Here they are. They produce more of the mysterious building resource. And I also got a wash house, 
which I can only build with stone blocks. This is great, this improves life quality by quite a lot, but I need stone blocks and I don't have them because they can only be produced very slowly and with a lot of stone and there's not enough stone here. And so I have to move axes to my colony in order to allow it to produce stone blocks, but I'm not producing very many axes because I'm focusing on shovel production because I need shovels to make houses. So that's rather slow. What else? I got water reservoirs, which, yeah, gives me a wash house. Yeah. I also got bread leavening, which allows me to make mills and bakeries. And I built a mill here. That's a cider mill. I built a flour mill here, which takes wheat, makes it into flour, and then the flour is used in a bakery to make bread, which I have here. And the bread um, is a much more efficient food source than wheat. So I plan to switch from feeding my people wheat to feeding them bread. But first I need to build these buildings, and to build these buildings I need... Oh, I need wood blocks and shovels for the mill, and I also need shovels for the bakery. And it's ju it just takes a while. It's very slow. Let's see, what else? Uh, I'm also researching some things. I'm researching pictograms to get libraries that'll increase the intelligence of my people by quite a lot, but of course it only has 39% chance of success, so that probably won't, won't uh, be done anytime soon. Also, I have a 100% chance of getting gill nets, which unlocks nothing by itself, but it will allow me eventually to get the next level of fisheries, and fish are fantastic. They are an excellent food source because you can just build them once and forget about them, and they provide enough food for quite a lot of people all by themselves. What else? Masonry I'm also getting too, which unlocks the next level of houses, as well as the next level of brickworks. So that'll be exciting. However, there only has an 88% chance. And also the next level of house would be this house. Not a large house, but a small one. However, I think that house would have um, as much, or slightly more even, life quality and health bonuses than uh, the large house does. Anyway, don't worry about that for a while. Oh, let's see. Let's go to the world map. Show you some things because I, I had some problems with my new vassal. He, um... There he is. You can see he's independent now because, strangely, his city rebelled immediately after he inherited it. And, and so he just got a game over the second he logged in. It was quite strange. And so he had to retake the city to inherit the city a second time. But when that happened, he became independent instead of my colony. And so I have now a, uh, a treaty with him pending. Next time he logs in, if he accepts that, then he'll become a part of the, the nation again. And I can reincorporate him. Oh, let's see. What else? Kupferhügel has some uh, stone block production, although it's very slow, and Kupferhügel just needs more people. And I'll probably switch people from wood production to stone production in Kupferhügel later once I give it more axes, but at the moment they just can't do anything. I also like to show you my vassal cities, but I'll have to do that through loading screens, so I will break the recording. Woodcut has expanded a bit as well. You can see its population has increased quite a lot. He's built more houses. He also built a market. Unfortunately, as we discovered, the market is not as useful as we thought. I was confused and thought it was used to establish trade routes between nations, but it's not. It's used to make one-time offers between nations. Uh, oh well. Anyway, he should probably have his workers stop working on that because we're not actually using it. Also, I see he's done a very bad job of organizing his, his things here. He has some merchants here. Um, what else? Butcher there, and there, and there. And there's his charcoal clamp, and there's a foundry, and there is a uh, builder. What else? Some toolmakers there, there is potters. A bit of a mess, but uh, whatever. It's not my city to govern. Uh, he also has an enormous number of resources that he's just not using, and this perplexes me. I'm not sure why that's the case. Anyway, hopefully, you can see he has lots of wood. If he would just uh, make a trade route, I would give him lots of money. I tried to explain that to him, but he doesn't seem to understand. Oh well. 
Anyway, woodcut otherwise is not terribly interesting. And here is Altros, his copper mine. This one's also not terribly impressive, but then it doesn't need to be. He just needs to work these copper mines, which he's not, I'm noticing, but whatever, fine. Anyway, he could also make a trade route for copper and sell that to me and make a lot of money too. And then I could sell him axes and stuff, but he doesn't seem to want to do that. Otherwise, this settlement's not terribly impressive. He has a clay digger and no fish, so some farms in the corners of the map where the fertile land is. And Pharos. I just realized I never intended to do a tour of my civilization, but I guess I'll do that. I haven't done it in a while. Pharos looks much better than Woodcut. He has organized things a bit better, and also I see he's done the little trick of having his buildings extend a little into the water in order to uh, use, as, use space as efficiently as possible, although he also has a road, and roads are useless, so that's a lot of wasted space, but oh well. Anyway, the population here, as you can see, is rather high, and he's doing a good job of uh, farming sheep. That's really nice. He also has some butchers over here. However, he's making too many sheep. As you can see, his uh, paddocks are full. He does, however, have warehouses here. Not very impressive ones. Also, they're built in a very bad position. The warehouses should be on this hill, which is defensible. Or maybe on this hill, but not out here in the plain. Whatever. In any case, He's not wasting resources by having no stockpiles available for them. Uh, okay, maybe he is wasting resources. Here are some resources just lying on the ground, but that doesn't make sense. They should be in this stockpile. Whatever. Anyway, uh, it's a big agricultural center. I'm sure he'll make Faros into a much more impressive place later, once he has more money. And he keeps asking me for money too, and I, I've paid him thousands of coins already, and I don't know what he's doing with all those coins. He's also mining the silver in order to make some money. Not sending it to me, though. Anyway, I next will show you um, the city formerly known as Zilbakam, now known as Suamar. And here is Zilbakam, and you see the uh, eponymous Zilbakam is still being mined. And he also has quite a lot of stockpiles that are not being wasted. So clearly clearly the infrastructure I established for him is being well utilized. He also has more uh, tool makers making things efficiently. He also, very surprisingly, uh, made enough houses to house his entire population. These, these um, slums appeared later since the last time I looked, but all of the slums that uh, were over here are gone. He's, he, I'm, I don't know how he had all the resources to make all those houses. Probably he um, got a bunch of free resources from inheriting the city a second time. When a player inherits a city, the player gets some free resources to, to start the game. And I assume through the bug that made him lose the city, he also got extra resources. He also got this 26-unit uh, army for free, um, so that's pretty cool for him. Anyway, he's offline at the moment. He doesn't log in very much, and I guess we'll just have to wait for um, his arrival. I don't really know what to expect from this guy, but I'm done with this settlement. I don't need it anymore. So. Whatever he does, as, as long as he does anything, I will profit, because I tax him. So, the more successful he is, the more money he pays me in taxes. Everybody wins, meaning I win. So I, honestly, I just I just don't even care what happens to Sumar at this point, or um, whatever, what did I call her there? Zilbakam. Anyway, that's it. I won't show you my cities, because they're really not very impressive. Sinfeld, Kupferberg, and Kupferhörgel are just, um... They're just mines. Kupferhörgl has um, the stone blocks, but other than that, nothing to see, really. So, I don't know what to tell you, other than, um, I'll be back. Wait, 6.8 bread? I'm making 6.8 bread for only 1.7 flour. 
That's incredibly efficient. Hmm. I have been quite surprised by the resource consumption created through my recent expansion. I have unlocked all the technologies available to me except this one. I actually ran out of knowledge space. I, I didn't even think that would happen because I had so much, but I guess uh, I guess I was wrong. This would upgrade my weavers and clockmakers, which I definitely want to do, but I have to wait a little bit, uh, a few hours, for the knowledge level to increase. I also got pictogram writing and masonry, and masonry unlocked Brickworks 3. Brickworks 3, which I've constructed, as you can see, some building has taken place. <laughs> um, Brickworks 3 here can make mud and or can make mud bricks and bricks. It, but to make bricks, I have to use 10 clay and 5 charcoal and 5 water, and resources that I thought I would never need to worry about are now becoming scarce. So, for example, water, which I made at the beginning of the game and then thought I would never need to concern myself with, now is running low. I have 39 water being produced and 36 is being consumed, which means I have had to make wells. Uh, each well produces six water, so water will never be a problem because a well only takes one tile, and so I can I can make lots and lots and lots of wells. However, it is still a problem. I also have another resource called laundry, which is made by uh, these wash houses, and laundry improves public health. But my public health has gone down again. It was at 22, now it's at 20. I am not entirely certain why. Seems quite fickle. In any case, I just need more everything. I'm consuming 22.6, rounding up, 23 wood per cycle. I, I bought 400 wood from my vassal, and that that's enough wood for about a day. <laughs> because I, I just... I, I am consuming it in my kilns. 12 wood, each kiln is using 12 wood. Also, I've had to turn some of my kilns to using uh, clay instead of mud because I was running out of mud. Now I have more mud, actually, so I should probably have them use mud instead. Oh, they are all using mud. Oh, okay. Why am I stockpiling mud? Oh, yes, I'm stockpiling mud because I will need mud to make mud bricks. I'm currently stockpiling these normal bricks, not mud bricks, because I need the normal bricks to make these higher level houses, which each give plus 20 life quality as opposed to plus 17, plus 15 health as opposed to plus 12 health, so they're just really good. Oh, also, I can build one right now, so I will. And there's the first one. Anyway, I, I also am expanding more or less everything. I also made a second bakery, and I have the bakeries using market stands, because through the market stands, I make so much more money. The problem is that these merchants, um, these merchants have a very high income, but my income tax is only 25%, so I will, at least if I understand the game systems correctly, and I almost certainly do not, I only get 4.4 from this one guy. But if I have each production building have a separate market stand, I get that 4.4 basically from every building. So both of these bakeries now are producing four taxes for me, so I get a lot more money. And it also means the money goes directly to the um, producers, increasing their production capability. So I now am producing roughly enough bread to feed my my people. Not quite, but it's it's enough. How much wheat do these consume? I can actually have a, another mill. 3.6? 3.5. I could have another mill. There's, there's also a strange thing about mills. Mills cannot be next to each other for some reason. Uh, must be at least eight tiles away. I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, I won't build a mill though, because right now I am saving my stone blocks for the... Uh, where is it? Library which um, is sort of the big research building. And I will need it to get more of the high-level research stuff. And it requires 10 stone blocks, 100 clay. It's a big, big thing. 
and I want to stockpile my building resources. For example, I don't need planks right now, so I want to stockpile about 100 and then turn off my plank production, which is consuming nine wood. So my wood consumption is very high right now because I'm in a stockpiling phase. But once I once I have enough resources in my stockpile, I'll I'll, I'll cool it. <laughs> I'll I'll uh, not have so much production. I also think I might just destroy some of my extra tin ore just because I have too much of it. Uh, I have 57 tin, and I just don't need all this tin ore. And these tin producers are consuming charcoal. Actually, they're consuming very little charcoal. The charcoal consumption is also a problem. That each of my kilns is is consuming so many resources. Whatever. Anyway, I still haven't had the ability to staff my uh, elders' councils, my justice department, and also uh, my waste. No, wrong screen. Uh, where is it? Waste is now higher again in Solberg because the population has increased. Oh yeah, the population, it's all, it's 100 higher now. Um, it was hovering at around 1,140, now it's at 1,240. Yet I feel like it hasn't increased at all because I still need more people. <laughs> anyway, I've, um, oh what else? Yeah, these, these laundry houses are consuming water and so water is, is badly needed. In any case, I um, am not just building things in Solberg, however. I don't think I've built anything else here I need to show you. Oh, I upgraded my other builder's um, hut as well, just because I do so much building. And have two, two builder's huts makes things build much more quickly. Otherwise, they take hours to build. And I believe I'm building another, yes, I'm building another dock because I um, ran out of docking space again, and I am currently losing 22 clay per cycle, so I need to import more clay from Tongrube, which I will because I have upgraded the clay production of Tongrube. It is now producing uh, 25, or 23, 23 clay, as opposed to the, I think, 12? Or something it was producing earlier. I I imported some high level building materials and built the level two clay diggers, and so now I can produce. I, I will export twenty five clay instead of twenty three because they have a lot of extra anyway. So I want to produce that stockpile, and by doing that, I will be able to um, support the, my production of, of stuff. In Solberg, I also could have all of my potters have separate market stands as well. However, that would reduce all of their production efficiencies enough that I would need to have a, another potter active, which would consume even more resources. And so I'll wait until I have more resource production before I do that. But I will eventually because that again will increase my taxes. Instead of having one four coin tax from the merchant, I will have whatever eight four coin taxes from each of the potters' huts. So that's a that's a much higher income. Which is also why my income is so high. <laughs> despite my waste, despite my trade balance. Oh, speaking of trade balance, I am purchasing axes, shovels, hoes, uh, mud bricks, planks, and bricks. Because I need all of it. <laughs> and either I can purchase it now or I can purchase it later when I have to build the buildings. So either way, I have to buy it, I might as well buy it now. Also, at Kupferhugu, I am producing stone blocks. Each level two stone quarry only produces 0.7 stone, stone blocks maximum. And so I need to have quite a lot of quarries active. So Kupferhugu's low population means I can only have about three maximum quarries active simultaneously. And so I do, the, the, the last one's under construction now. And once it's done, I will um, produce 2.1 stone blocks per cycle, and I think that's fine because stone blocks typically are not needed all that much, at least not at the moment. I only need them for the library and one or two production buildings. Anyway, once I do that, I will build houses. Houses, houses, houses. That has been my goal this whole time anyway. I've been trying to build houses, and 
I keep unlocking better houses and I keep needing to expand on my production. It's very frustrating. But soon I will be able to build probably 10 or 15 houses all at once, once I have a big pile of, of resources. A lot of shovels, a lot of axes, good stuff. I also have increased production in Sinfeld of, of wood. Sinfeld actually has some forests, not, not much, but it can produce, I think, something like four or five wood maximum, which is not a small amount. It's, that's fine, and given my wood consumption, <laughs> I, I need as much as I can get. Um, I'm surprised that my vassal has not taken advantage of my consumption of wood. He has two forest tiles, so he could produce wood in enormous amounts and then send it to me. Well, actually, he built a marketplace. I gave him the resources to build a marketplace, and so now he has one. All he has to do is click a couple buttons and put, whatever, 600 wood available for sale, and then I'll buy it like that with a click of a button, and he'll just get this huge influx of money, and he's constantly in debt. So that would be great for him, great for me, we both, it, it's awesome, but he won't do it, and it's its so frustrating. Oh, what else has happened? Kupfer Berg? I don't think Kupfer Berg has done anything at all. I'm pretty sure it's... Yeah, it's, it's nothing. Oh yes, also, conflict and loyalty have become a problem as well. Again, conflict is, is high, and I need to staff my Elders' Councils, but the problem is the Elders' Councils are not very important, and I really prefer to staff my production buildings instead of my government buildings, because the production buildings make stuff, and I need, and I need to build stuff with the stuff they make. The government buildings don't produce anything, they just make the population that currently exists um, slightly better, and that's, that's not good enough. <laughs> However, Sinfeld is having quite a bit of a building spree. It will um, produce wood in large amounts, also potatoes. I want to make it into a potato farm, um, not for export, but just for its own consumption. Uh, I want to have Sinfeld have a, a higher population because it will be a, a center of wood production, and stone production, and of course tin production, and also iron production as well. It has iron, that'll be in the future, obviously. And coal as well. So Sinfand will need more infrastructure, so I might as well build it now, so I don't have to build it later. Oh, so much to talk about. So many things are happening. And I still have not written my master's thesis. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing about that, but really, I, I kind of should do that. It, it, anyway, I must build more and more and more things. And also you can see I've built builders in some of my smaller settlements because I have to build things. Anyway, I'll be back, um, oh, I don't know, sometime. Oh, yes, also, my, um, my vassal here is now my vassal again. Um, the bug that caused his city to rebel has not happened again, and so he's back. Unfortunately, he just doesn't log in very much. So, I can't really do a lot with this guy. However, that is partially good because he only has one settlement, which is why I gave him a new rank. He is now a Thelgrave instead of a Burgrave. So I decided to make the titula... Titu, I don't like that word. Titulature, the titling of my civilization based on the amount of resources a player can afford in taxes. So a Felgrave is a player that has only one city, and that means the player has very little money but a very large amount of state power, because the capital city does not cost any state power, and so he'll just have lots of state power that he's not using, which I will then take, because I need it. Um, my state power is only 13. And if not for my uh, my vassals, I would actually have negative state power. So I, I need I need them. <laughs> what is this maintenance? Distance of direct subordinate. Oh, I see. Right, because my Felgrave is fairly far away, he's costing me. I actually have a net loss of state power for him, but that's okay because I'm getting taxes too. Anyway, I tax him. 
not so much money, but I tax him a lot of state power. And my Burgrave, then, is my other vassal, Aldora. A Burgrave, then, is a player that has several cities that are not very well developed, and so it's a... Uh, a Burgrave is basically just the worst, because a Burgrave has the uh, lowest um, amount of taxes. He can't afford to pay much in state power, because he has several settlements, so his... Um, his state power is already quite utilized, and his economy is bad, so he can't afford to pay taxes either. So he just kind of sucks. And I have then decided that a Margrave, who is no one at the moment, will be a player that has a large economy and many settlements that can afford to pay a lot of taxes, uh, basically the opposite of a Felgrave. Instead of having high power taxes and low income tax, it would be a low power tax and a high income tax. So it's just the opposite. So it just determines how much people, determined by how much people can afford to pay. I think I would also like to um, make a colony somewhere out here on the, on the border and then have that be a, uh, a Burgrave. And then I could put um, this guy, I could put Fallen under the charge of that Burgrave, who would then be under my charge, so that um, Fallen would not be my direct subordinate, so I would not be taking the uh, state power penalty that I otherwise would be. However, I can't do that, because I don't, I don't have the resources for it. And I also don't really know how I can make any more colonies either, because I need all of my settlements. Which of these settlements would I make into a colony? Well, not, not either of my copper-producing settlements. I need copper extremely severely, and certainly not my tin producing settlement, because I need tin extremely severely. And certainly not Tonguba. Tonguba is just, it's its massive. It's, it produces wood, and, and potatoes, and fish, and, and leather, and what else? Wood? Did I say that? Clay? So, I don't really have any settlements that I want to make into colonies, but I need to make more colonies, obviously, so I can have more players under me. And the more players I have, the faster my civilization will expand by itself, because the players do their own thing and they, they expand their own cities. And so I'm not really certain what to do, because I obviously want to make this whole peninsula mine. This I want that, the whole thing should be my civilization. That's my goal. But I don't really see how that can happen unless I somehow get a lot more state power. I need 25 state power to be, I guess I could have negative state power, but that's a pretty bad idea because that lowers um, uh, loyalty. And lower loyalty is bad. Interesting idea though. I, I'm wondering whether I would make a, uh, a player down here who would then be um, Donakulda's vassal. So he's a Burgrave, I guess I'd make a Felgrave down here, and th these are all amazing tiles, and so obviously that player would be doing really well. That's a good idea, I think I should probably start that, especially because the new month will begin in, uh, well, just a few days, and so I should prepare a colony for a new player. But then again, do I really want a new player? Uh, someone who's just purchased the game and doesn't know how to play. I probably want an experienced player. Anyway, I'm not really in a position to make another colony at the moment. Or am I? I need to think about this. I don't know. But in any case, I, I'll break the recording now. I didn't expect to be recording this long, but I just had a lot to say. So I'll be back once I've built more stuff, I guess. Uh, uh, which button do I press to stop recording? I've already forgotten. This one. What's this? Where am I? What is this beautiful tile? This is my colony. I created it... Oh, uh, one day has passed since I last recorded. I created this uh, about, uh, I guess, 12, 15-ish hours ago with only 50 people, and it's already at 100 because this tile is so amazing. It has tons of fertile land, so I can produce sheep and carrots and also fish and... Uh, it has clay as well, leather, meat, stone, it's, it's an amazing tile. And this will be my colony. And right now it's pretty small, it has iron too, that'll be useful later. 
Right now it's quite small, but once it reaches 150 people, which should be quite fast actually, considering in less than a day it uh, has already reached 108 people, so probably this time tomorrow it will be at uh, what was 7.3 people every two and a half hours. That would be... I can't do the math, whatever. Anyway, it, it'll be done pretty quickly. And I'll be able to make it a colony just before the turn of the month. So I'll be able to get a player here. Although I don't really want a new player again. So the fact that the, the next month is beginning is more of a coincidence, really. Oh, also, the name is Heisingros, which I think is just a hilariously fun name. It, it is a deliberately obtruse name that I just find fun to say. Helsingros. Helsingros. <laughs> anyway, it has a massive need for people at the moment. It has uh, lots of wood and stone resources that are just not being used because there aren't people to use them. Also, these are high-level woodcutters too. I made high-level um, high tannery and I wanted to make a high-level weaver as well. Yeah. Right. Why? I forgot. Why did I not do this? Well, whatever. Anyway, make a weaver and a cloth maker. Oh, not enough axes. Oh. Oops. Well, I'll bring some more axes then. Anyway, this tile will be amazing, and whoever inherits it will have a great time, hopefully, unless the bug happens. Speaking of bugs, my vassal, Suomar, who, uh, oh wait, no, no, his city is called Sumar, he's called Fallen. My vassal, Fallen, lost all of his technology when his city rebelled, and so I had to give him, you can see that treaty there, all of his technology again. Meaning he has to research all of it again, so he'll be busy for a few weeks just sitting in that one tile doing nothing except researching, which is a bit frustrating. So I think I'll have to make another colony up there in order to... Well, in order to be able to um, colonize the rest of the peninsula quickly enough. Anyway, I'm excited for Helsingros. I think it'll be a fantastic city. What else do I want to show you? I, of course, will show you Solberg. Quite a few things have been built there. Before I do that, I want to finish things in this screen. I got... Um, Library and Handloom, yes, upgraded weavers and cloth makers. You saw one of those in Housing Dress. Pictogram writing allowed me to get a library, and you see a library gives me 3,000 culture, 3,000 um, knowledge space. That's more than all of my culture. So just one library it only requires three people, and that's, that's, uh, that's quite a lot. So I don't really need to worry about culture ever again. And I'm also being uh, upgrading my mills and bakeries too because I produced, I built one more mill. Uh, there it is. So now I'm producing 3.3 flour and my bakery is using 2.8. And so they're producing 11.2 bread, which is really good. That's, that's feeding all of my people's bread needs. Fantastic. We are a bit low on wheat though. Only 75% population access. Also, Solberg's population just isn't increasing very much, and I don't understand why. The quality of life here is amazing. They have so much stuff. They have, they have, they have alcohol and furnishings and clothing and social access and foods, and they have multiple kinds of all these things too. Yet they, they're, they're just they're not, they're not breeding. I don't understand what the problem is. It's stuck at around 1,200. It was at 1,240 when I made Helsingros. I don't know what happened. And here's Solberg. I have built many more houses and some are under construction. Unfortunately, I accidentally clicked large house here instead of house. So I built this one instead of this one. This one requires more resources, is more expensive and also has lower life quality and health bonuses. Slightly lower, but still lower. Uh, unfortunate that I didn't notice I was building those, but that's okay, because they're still better than slums. They're much better than slums. So, eh, whatever, fine. 
Anyway, uh, built more houses along the coast here, and the low, the population problem really has been has befuddled me because I can't replace a lot of the people who are leaving my industries. Speaking of my industries, I've turned off some of them and upgraded some of them. See, I have better um, weavers and cloth makers now, producing much more cloth, which is here, bringing population excess up to 85%. I can't upgrade these carpet makers though because I need saws, and I can't make saws until uh, some point in the future. I don't really know exactly why I can't make saws, but I can. However, a problem with my income has been that um, my waste has has gone up dramatically because my state power has been reduced, of course, by 25 because I made another settlement. And so I'm, I'm eager to be rid of Helsingros, which I'm sure will have a name change as soon as it is inherited. But for now, it's called Helsingros. 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 <laughs> anyway, once I make that a colony, I will get my 25 state power back. And then I will finally um, not have this waste problem. Also, my trading balance is low because I, like I showed you last time, am purchasing all of my trade goods. All of my construction materials, I mean, not trade goods. What else? I am still consuming enormous amounts of wood. Oh, yes, I also ran out of planks, too. I suppose I should reactivate the sawmill. Of course, I have no one to work it, but hopefully it will soon. And I am consuming an enormous amount of charcoal because I tin and, and copper and bronze to smelt. I just need more wood. I need to keep buying wood from my vassal. And unfortunately, for some reason, when he puts his wood for sale in the market here, and I purchase it, he doesn't get any money. I don't, I don't know why that is. Uh, I've been giving him money just as gifts in order to cover the costs, so that means I'm paying twice. I buy 400 coins worth of wood, and then I pay him 400 coins. So in the end, I lose 800 coins. Now, of course, that's fair for him, but it's very unfair for me, because I shouldn't have to do that. But, oh well, whatever. Anyway, he needs money. I've had to turn off some of my doctors, and of course turned off all of the elders' councils, because I just don't have the population. I need about... 16? No. 25? more people, no more than that, to work in order to um, staff all these buildings. I just I just can't right now. I'm also producing a large amount of bricks. This brickworks is still consuming an enormous amount of materials. If I were to turn off this brickworks, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't need to import so much wood, I wouldn't need to import so much clay, but I need the brickworks because I need bricks to make houses. Uh, these houses, not these houses. Also, my number of slums has been reduced by quite a lot, too. At least, I think it has. I'm pretty sure it has. I think probably a way of increasing my population now would be not to increase food production, uh, increase the number of amenities, make, make more clothing. Don't do other things to improve life quality. Just build houses. Because I think that would be enough. Well, a part of the problem is the low... Um, average health, because each of these gives minus 5 health, meaning that the average health is now only 21. So if I were to build lots of houses, if there were to be no slums, then the average health would go up to something higher. I don't know how, how high it would be, but certainly it would be better. And then maybe that would help with um, population increases? I don't really understand. In any case, I'm just waiting now to get more resources to build more houses, waiting for Helsingros to finally be a col a uh, yes, a colony. And I will show you that when it happens, but of course that'll be in, uh, I don't know, probably about a day or so, I guess, maybe? Yeah. Slightly more than 24 hours have passed since I last recorded. I think I like this once every 24 hours recording, though, because I'm never really sure exactly what merits recording and what doesn't merit recording, and I don't want to miss things, but then I also don't want to record things that aren't very important. But then I think if I just have a stable cycle of recording, then I'll get some things, not get other things, but if anything's really important, I'll mention it. Anyway, 
I have been annoyed with Emir, partially because the server has been inactive for some time, uh, but that's just to be expected, I suppose. The servers are in Malta, and apparently the internet connection to Malta is not so good, I suppose. I still have Helsingurs. Oh wait, did I explain Helsingurs? Yes, I did. I re yes, I remember saying the name. Right. I explained it yesterday. So I still have Helsingurs. Its population is now 144, and I'm annoyed by this because I want to be rid of this stupid settlement. I need to be rid of it to get my state power back because that is the limiting factor. I realized that if I just had more state power, my population would expand again. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. And so I need to be rid of Helsingos. Unfortunately, its population is just barely not high enough. So I've uh, gotten some people from Tongruba, not very many, just six people, to bump up the population to the 150 necessary. Because <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. Also, I want to be rid of these mining settlements as well, because they don't do anything. Actually, Synthed is important because it has tin, of course, but also iron and coal and stone and fish and wood as well. Speaking of wood, my wood consumption is extremely high. I've had to throttle it quite a lot, but I was, I was at minus... 29, I think. Yeah, minus 29 wood per cycle, which was obviously not exactly sustainable. So I've tweaked things and now it's it's lower. Most of it's being used to make charcoal anyway, and I have a stockpile of charcoal so I can afford to not make quite so much charcoal for a while. I will show you Solberg. I've, I've built quite a few things there, but firstly I want to mention that Kupferberg I am hoping to make into a colony because Kupferberg does nothing except mine copper. Its, its whole thing is this, this copper. Everything else it does is just take my resources from me. So I, I built some farms there, and what I will do, I'm also manufacturing hoes and potatoes in Sinfeld, and I will export the stuff from Sinfeld to Kupferberg build Kupferberg's infrastructure enough that its population can reach 150 so that I can make it a colony and just be rid of it. And I don't care who inherits it, um, tomorrow the keys will be released, or is it today? I forget if it's on the last day or the first day of the month. Anyway, very soon the keys will be released and probably some noob will get Kupferberg and that's fine, I don't care. The noob can do whatever he wants. He can he can settle this island, he can settle over here, he can go up here, whatever, I don't care. As long as he keeps exporting copper to me, he can do whatever he wants. I don't want to deal with this settlement anymore. I'm tired of it. So I'll just make it a Felgrave or something and just, just ignore it. Speaking of Felgraves, Suomar has made Iron Town. This is a very good tile, which I marked on my resource map. I haven't shown you that resource map in quite some time, actually. Well, probably because it hasn't changed. I haven't done any more exploring since I finished exploring this southwest coast. Anyway, Iron Town has hunting and fish and iron and uh, copper, I think, as well. It has a lot of stuff. And so I'm glad that he is expanding, though unfortunately he still has to research things. Oh, there are still some things I haven't given him. Uh, oh, speaking of research, I've researched more things than I need to show you. Just a moment though, before I forget. Give him all of these things. He'll be researching for several weeks to reach the point where he was before the bug happened that made his city rebel. In any case, he's um, busy doing stuff. And again, I don't care. All I want is that this peninsula, well, this, this whole peninsula, is filled with cities. I just want to own the whole peninsula. I don't care how my colonies do it. I don't care what my vassal's strategy is, as long as they just fill the city. They can move around, they can abandon their city, what, I don't care, as long as the area is developed. That's what I want. What is this? Wild horses in Salberg. Okay. <sighs> also, my other vassal, Donakulda, has been uh, worryingly inactive over the past day or two. Uh, he hasn't responded to my messages, uh, he hasn't sold me any more wood, which is why I'm running so low, unless he put some on the market, I just didn't realize. No, he didn't. Um, I'm worried he might have abandoned his civilization, which is precisely what I don't want from my vassals. Oh well. 
Tomorrow the keys will be released, and so a flood of noobs will come. Probably this uh, chaotic area down here, where almost all of the civilizations are inactive, and there are rebel cities here. Another inactive player, another inactive player. Anyway, I, I'm certain this will become overrun by a gaggle of noobs who will have fun playing with each other and and not really be a threat to me. The Empire of the Rising Phoenix over here, however, is much more powerful. And I've been doing some trading with Shock here. However, I think I'm making some very bad deals. I traded some technology, but I, I traded useful technology to him for not so useful technology. But of course, I didn't know what the technology did. I just traded for it because it sounded useful and I researched it and I couldn't do anything with it. So, speaking of the technology, right now I'm researching phonetic writing and academia to increase my knowledge output, which is great because I'm making research everything else more quickly. What did I do in the past day? I think I researched edu- yes, I got education, animal husbandry, and pack animals. And to show you those things, I will need to load Solberg. Uh, I don't think I'll show you any of those other things in Kupferberg or Zinfeld. I just built some farms, and that's it. I guess I'll show you Helsingros as well before I finally release it. I won't build any- I love that, English. I won't build anything else in Helsingros before I release it. Okay. Well, I learned from another player that apparently wash houses don't- oops, I didn't even click on that. Wash houses don't do anything. They just take um, water, but they don't increase the health of the population like they're supposed to. I don't know if that's true. I hope that's not true because that would be terrible for me considering I built three of the dang things and they're consuming quite a lot of water, but uh, oh well, whatever. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe the player just doesn't understand how they work. Regardless, I have them now, so um, there's nothing I can do about it. I am making money from them at least, somehow. They doesn't have any workers, but the workers have an income, and I'm getting a portion of that income. Uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, Solberg's population has increased slightly since you last saw it, and I have staffed some of the Elder's Councils, finally which is reducing its conflicts a little bit. I hope to staff all the others councils eventually. Um, let's see, guards, scribes, oh yes, that's right, the school. So I built this, I unlocked the capability of building schools and now I am making the cleverly named school resource, which takes clay and was unlocked with education and schools increase the um, overall intelligence of your population. So the population's intelligence is now 61. I think it was 50, if I recall correctly, 50 um, yesterday. So that's quite good. That means everything researches more quickly. I don't know what else intelligence does, if it has anything, any other use besides knowledge, but anyway, I have it. Maybe there's a victory condition or something that says have average intelligence at a certain level. Regardless, it's it's done now. I am consuming quite a lot more clay, though, than I would like. Uh, my clay consumption has increased so much that I am losing clay, even though I'm importing 25. But that's mostly because I'm producing bricks, and producing bricks consumes 10 clay per cycle, which is pretty huge. What else? Uh, I'm saving my shovels so that I can afford to research sewers. I don't know what this does, but something I want apparently. However, of course, I have to purchase the shovels because I'm no longer producing them as a state resource because I need to save my money. Or do I actually? No, because I'm about to get my money back once I lose, well, I'll get my state power back which will increase my income by reducing my waste due to an increase in state power which increases my uh, territory administration efficiency, whatever. Anyway, I'll get the money back once I finally make heads and us a colony, which will happen in about one hour. Also, the number of slums has been greatly reduced, still some, but not so many, because I built some houses. If, if they'll load, I could show you. Over here behind the loading screen, there are houses, quite a few. And these, I think, are mostly not inhabited yet. Oh, they are. Okay. Well, when I 
Not so long ago, these houses were not inhabited. Anyway, these have greatly increased the life quality and health of my population, which should make the population increase dramatically as soon as the state power returns. Uh, what else have I done? Uh, technology, I got animal husbandry and pack animals, which allows me to upgrade my docks and cattle farms. However, upgrading my cattle farms requires axes and I need to save my axes for other things. I also want to save my money because I don't have very much at the moment. And these docks can be upgraded, but they require shovels. Oh, they don't require shovels. Oh, they do. They, yeah, okay, they require shovels. Um, I don't need to upgrade the docks at the moment, but of course, upgrading them would be good instead of building more. Although I have 17 cargo capacity available at the moment, so I don't need to worry about it. Also, I set my tax rate to 25%. So that way, if we look at some of these other ones, Altros, for example, is giving me two coins in tax. And Pharos, that's three coins. That's four coins there. He's not using my trading routes very much, though, but I'm still taxing him slightly. My vassal, of course, Stone Akulda. I'm also somehow taxing myself. I'm getting 26 income. I, I'm, I'm not really sure how that works. I, I don't really know if that means anything at all, my, my taxation of myself, but regardless, I'm taxing myself. And now I am... Oh yes, I also built another mill so I can increase bread production. My bread can... English! My bread production now meets more or less all of my population's demand for it. Everyone that can afford it anyway. I think that's all, really. I've mostly just been waiting. The past day was not very productive. I was somewhat annoyed with Emir, but I realized that because I went into negative state power, I hampered the development of my civilization for about two or three days, which is a very long time for your civilization to not do very much. So I know not to do that now, and I will soon be rid of two of my settlements, which will increase my state power dramatically, and I will then be able to improve Solberg quite dramatically as well. So... This slump will be followed by a period of rapid expansion, I'm certain. Of course, I'll also need to make another woodcutting settlement for sure, but I'll worry about that later. Anyway, I'll be back once uh, these things finish researching. Eh, probably not, but definitely once I make Hedison Gross into a colony. Once I'm finally rid of that dead weight. I also made some advertisements on the Discord server, and hopefully I will be contacted by some excellent player who will be very active and expansionist minded and uh, make his and his amazing capital and occupy all these other tiles and these mountains because I want to establish a border here to make this my territory, my peninsula that I own for me. It's mine, just not the right color yet. Although this northern area will be difficult. Anyway, I'll be back in approximately, let's say, um, three hours? Ah, they grow up so quickly, but not quickly enough. Anyway, Helsing Gross got those six people from uh, Tongruba and also had a few more people born. And so now Helsingos is ready to become a colony. Get out of my life, Helsingos. Away with you. Be gone. Hooray. Oh, I'm so glad. It's, it's away now. Yes, I have state power again. Ah, oh, this, is, this is great. Uh, I immediately will lower the taxes of my vassals because I am taxing them extremely. Let's see. I'll take... 10% of his, 20% of his, much better, okay. So, now my state power will recalculate and I can also get my, um, not state workers, where's the thing, representative money thing back. I don't know if that does anything, really, but I have it, so that's exciting. 
Okay, 23 state power. Good. And then I'll be rid of Kuplebeak at some point in the future, and that will improve my state power even more. But great, now I have state power, which will increase that to 46, and that's super good. Uh, which means... which means what? Which means I will take people off of the guard towers, which are increasing loyalty, and put them on the... Uh, whatever they're called. The Elders Councils to improve justice. <sighs> and I'll also improve my income by quite a lot because my waste will go down because I finally don't have to worry about having low state power, although for some reason my waste is still pretty high. Losing 50 to waste? A little strange. Why is my trading expense so low? Well, whatever. Anyway, I'll, uh, I need to stop this video now, actually. I'm already at one hour of content, and I, I wasn't recording for a few days. Because things have happened. Anyway, this is now a colony. Uh, no one has responded to my Discord um, advertisements yet, but perhaps someone will soon. Anyway, Kupfeberg will be a colony, and then I'll have plus 50 state power, and with that I'll make a colony out in the forest or something that I can use for harvesting wood, because my wood harvesting vassal apparently doesn't seem interested in doing that anymore. Anyway, I'll see you later, I guess?